Hello and welcome to the third Beer and Code. Um, today's topic is implementing Dapper in Java. And what Dapper is, is it's an ORM framework. Uh, and essentially, the goal of the software is, or the library, is to map a row in a database or result set to an object. So instead of querying the database and getting back some just block and table of results, you query the database and get back a list of objects that you can, uh, just plain old Java objects that, that you can use. Um, so before we go on to that, I want to talk about the beer portion of Beer and Code. Uh, currently I'm enjoying a Rush River Bubble Jack by Rush River, a brewery in River Falls, Wisconsin. Uh, it's an India Pale Ale, uh, and it's one of my favorites. Uh, so you should pick it up if you are an IPA fan. I mean, they don't, they don't pay me to say that, by the way. So, let's have a look at uh, the starting point. And the starting point is sort of the old-fashioned, or the, the most simple way of query, querying the database. So here, um, the stuff is going to stay the same. You just, we're setting up the connection. You don't have to worry about any of that. Uh, here is our SQL statement we're going to run. It's just selecting from the, our country table, which I will show you a little bit more uh, and it's just getting the, the it's a very very simple query. And to do that using JDBC or raw JDBC, you call connection dot create statement, and that returns back a statement object. And then you call execute query on that statement object and pass in the SQL. This gives you back a result set, and the result set represents the table of data that has a, a row per result. And what you can do is you can loop through it calling result set dot next. And then you can call result set dot get string and pass in either the name of the column, or in this case, we're just passing the index of the column. Uh, but I can show you another example. We're going to say uh, the name of the column we want to look at is called name. So what we're going to do here is if I run this for you, you'll see that we are printing out a list of countries, country names. So we ran this query and did select star from country and it printed out our country names because we only printed out column with the name name. Um, so that's the raw way to do it. And we want to cut out this extra cruft of connection.create statement, execute query, while rs.next, um, get string with name. Like we don't have to we don't want to have to do that every time we want to query something else. So we're gonna uh, write a little teeny library to do that for us. And I've got it started for us over here in a class called JDapper. <clears throat> Excuse me. And JDapper is a class that just simply wraps this base connection object um, for use for later use. And here is our method that we're going to be focusing on building. Uh, the signature is uh, as follows. It takes in the SQL, so it takes in your SQL statement, your select, and it takes in a type or a class object. And what this represents is the type that we actually want to return. So as you can see this is a generic this is a generic method and it returns a list of some type t. And that type is based upon whatever type you passed in here. And we'll see more on how you uh, implement that or how you will call this in the future uh, in a little bit. But essentially this is how we pass in the type information and how we use reflection to do all of this. So we're going to use reflection fairly heavily in here to get information out of the type and uh, help us map the objects. So, uh, I'll, the goal here is to somehow populate this list of t with data. And to do that, we're going to start by hopping over to our original code, grabbing that, and pasting it in here. Because we still need to do this code, but we just want to wrap it up all behind the scenes. All right, so now we have our result set. We're not going to just print out uh, one of the columns. We need to do something with it. And what are we going to do? Well, like I said, um, each row of the database represents one object. So we need to create a new object each time through the loop. And the object is going to be of type T, some type T, and we're going to call it object. Now, how do I new that up? How do I new up a type T? Um, well, to do that, we're going to use reflection. So we're going to use the type class, or the type parameter that we passed in. 
and we're going to call it get constructor because that's how you new up objects with their constructors. And then we're going to call new. New instance. Boom. So this is going to give us a type T. Pretty cool. So now, uh, now that we have our object, let's just st skip right to this. Add object. Because once we have our object, we're going to add it to our results, and eventually we'll return it. So right now what we're doing is we're just adding an empty object to our list of results. Somehow in here, we're going to have to populate that object. And like I said before, we're going to take the name of the fields in the object and map it to the name of the columns in the database. So to do that, we need to know that the th all of the fields that are in our type. In order to get the fields out of the type, you use more reflection. Type dot get fields. Super awesome. And that returns a type of uh, field array. Boom. Let's import it. And then, so now that we have all of the fields in our type, we're going to loop through those and um, grab the data, the, the corresponding data, out of our result set. So in order to do that, we were going to call rs.getObject. So like we were doing before, uh, we're calling getObject and passing in the column name. And in this case, the column name is the name of our field. So field.name, get name. And that just returns an object. Boom. All right, so now we have our data. So somehow we have to set this data into our object uh, into the correct field. Once again, more reflection. So field.set, pass in the object, and pass in the data. Boom. So now, so now what we're doing here to recap is we're looping through all of the fields in the object and we're getting the data in the corresponding f column name as the field name and we're setting it into our object. And then after that we are adding an object to our list and this time now it should be fully populated. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to call this method now over here. Um, let's look at our database for a second first. Alright, so here's our database and as you can see, here's that same query, select star from country. You can see there is a column called code, a column called name, and a column called surface area. And this is what we're going this is what we're going to map these column names to our field names in our object. So let's have a look at our object. We're calling it country, and it has the exact same field names, code, name, and surface area. So that's how we know to map the fields correctly. So in here, what we're going to do is we're going to create a JDapper, and we're going to pass in that connection. And now we're going to call jd.query, pass in our SQL, and pass in the type. And the type is going to be this country type. So we're going to pass in country.class. And what type does it return? If I hover over it, it tells me, but you guys can't see. Uh, it returns a list of country uh, results. Boom. So that's really cool. So who knows? Maybe this works. Uh, let's loop through the results and see. Um, Boom. Okay, so now in theory, we should print out a list of country names like we already had here. So I'm going to run it again. Boom. And now as you can see, it printed out the country names. So what, what did we learn today? Uh, mainly, we learned a lot about reflection on how once you have this type of a class, you can do things like type dot get fields to get all of the fields in the class. You can do things like even getting the constructor and creating a new instance to create a new T, even when you don't know what type it is. And then you can do cool things like field dot set 
and actually put data into an object that you created using generics. We also did a little bit of querying in JDBC uh, and learned a little bit about ORM frameworks. So uh, I learned a whole bunch while I was making this video for you guys, and I hope you did too. Uh, if you'd like to learn more, please click like and or subscribe. And let me see here. Thanks for watching. Uh, once again, uh, this is Beer and Code. I appreciate your viewership. Cheers. Hey guys, I forgot to mention earlier, uh, if there's a new feature that you would like to see added to JDapper, uh, let me know. I hope to add it in a future video. Uh, the current version is super, super simple and basic, and it will blow up with any sort of complex object at all. Uh, it, it only really works with public fields right now. So uh, let me know if there's a feature you'd like to see added, and I would uh, like to make a video about it. So uh, yeah, please uh, comment below. And thanks again for watching.